Hello there my friends and welcome to the unboxing and walkthrough of um, the Star Codes Astro Oracle which is by Heather Rowan Robbins um, and illustrated by Lucas Lua de Souza. Um, this is a 56 card deck um, with a guidebook that um, basically goes through astrological um, planets, aspects, star signs, and it's a really good tool to be able to um, just deepen your knowledge of astrological aspects within your work. Um, you can read this um, oracle on its own, or you can use it with the tarot, which is primarily why I, um, why I bought it. Um, I have a big interest in astrology and um, I also read star um, charts as well, um, astrological charts. I'm not an expert at all, um, the tarot is my field, um, but whereas they are all interconnected so it's something that's very relevant in terms of, um, you know, as a resource to be able to deepen my practice. So let's get started with this deck. Um, it comes with this really awesome guidebook. I've already had a flick through and I did already do a read through as well. Um, I did, but I didn't like the, um, the filming. So, uh, yeah, I am refilming it. Um, so it comes in a, you know, pretty standard box, um, cardboard box, um, really lovely kind of patterning. If you can see that, I don't know. My lighting is so crap. I'm so sorry. I'm filming this in probably the worst light that you can think of. Um, but uh, you do have this kind of like pattern there, which you can just about see. I will be getting a better light very soon, um, because we we get quite dark um, quite early here in the UK at the moment. So, yes. Anyway, so that's the box, pretty standard. Um, and then um, you've got the guidebook here, which is pretty good. Um, it's just a very basic um like introduction into how to conduct a reading um and the reading methods also some spreads as well um and just an, a kind of basic uh introduction to to elements and things that appear within the deck now the deck is structured into four um four areas lenses celestial characters locations and patterns and within those they also have further divisions so we'll go through those um right so we'll start here with this first card here which is and the artwork is just incredible it's just really beautiful um so here we go aries and we have act I really love this background, this geometrical background. Um, you've also got the lightning bolt, which is, you know, just exactly what Aries the Ram is, and Mars, and fire. So that's card number one. And also the backs of these cards. I mean, they are just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, the card stock is not the worst but it's not the best and um, there's not really that much plastic coating on them um but they are and they're pretty good um pretty good quality not too bad um yeah they're okay they're okay not the best not the worst so i'll pop them like that so that you can see the backs as well and this is taurus look at that gorgeous gorgeous like beautiful colors of venus uh, it just you can just really see the beauty like is in with this one you can really see the force and the drive you know of the ram here you can just see the the beauty of taurus yeah that venusian energy and earth and then we have gemini with mercury cross pollinate I really love the artwork on these cards and they really evoke something in me quite deep which I'm now really looking at with Dex. This cancer is so wonderful, isn't it? Immerse. You can just feel that watery energy of the moon. Leo, shine. And the sun just radiates from behind uh, the the face of the 
lion, which is just so amazing with the sign of fire here in the corner. Virgo, digest. I love that. That sense of gather and and assimilating, organising. Love that. And Earth and Mercury again. Libra. This is such a gorgeous Libra. This balance. And how delicate this balance is and how much, you know, intricacy is needed in order to retain this balance. Again, we have Venus. And then we have Scorpio. Investigate. I love that. The water sign in the corner. And then we also have two planets here. We have Pluto and then we also have Mars as well. Sagittarius with Jupiter. They're very inspiring, these cards. I really like them. Capricorn, achieve. So with that forward momentum movement of like the same, similar to Aries, you know, these two horned beings. Whereas Capricorn is just so interesting because it's like, it's half fish and half goat. So it came from water onto the earth. So driven. And also ruled by Saturn as well. Aquarius. I didn't realise that Aquarius was ruled by Saturn as well. But then we have Uranus in the corner. And I love this idea of collaboration. Temperance definitely is the resonance that I feel here. Pisces with these beautiful, beautiful like... You know, these the Pisceans are so wonderful and watery and Neptunian. Beautiful. Can't remember what that one is. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so those are the star signs. Um, and then it moves on into the, the celestial characters. So those were the lenses. So the things that we see... We see through the, the traits we see things through, and uh, now we have the celestial characters. Um, so this is dignified. So when a particular planet enters a sign, um, it either bolsters or strengthens um, the, the the sign, depending on where it is. Um, now this is probably one of the reasons why I got this deck because this image appeared to me um, in a vision and then every time I saw this in readings it just kept on like coming up um, and I was just like I think I need to get this deck of cards because this reminds me of this discomfort. Um, so they use a really good example in the book that this debilitated like if you put a city dweller in the in the forest he will they will be debilitated and i think that that was a really good um idea of uh of reference so yeah but you can see there's beauty within it but it's just really confused it's like how do you get there it's the labyrinth i really like that a lot and also this um also appeared in a vision as well so these were those the images were the two reasons why i got this deck um or one of them and um, there's a few other images as well but uh yeah this also appeared to me in a vision and i'm like oh they actually appear in cards um i think i will take them and retrograde review you know it's this kind of you know it says that Mercury retrograde gets a bad rap and I really do think so because I never really noticed that during times of Mer Mercury retrograde things used to go wrong and I think it's more about our review of how we're, how we're doing things. We need to change the way we do things to adapt. That's what I believe a retrograde is about. Um, yeah, this solar calm... So then now after we've gone into the um how the how the planets behave in the signs, we go into this um into the solar behaviors. 
and you know when the sun, when the sun is calm you know and just like kind of in the period of rest that's the solar calm so we're clarifying we're seeing like how the the sun is hitting all of those planets and really having the ability to to really look through that lens and be clear i love that love the colors as well solar flares really interesting when like it almost, um, you know, a flare will really kind of, you know, flare ex exactly what it is, a solar flare, activate. So what did we have here? We had, yeah, clarify, and here we have activate, you know, can get things moving. Pick up the bomb, I get a feel of this card. Um, and the sun, oh my God, it's such a beautiful card, source, absolutely and then you've got the moon i just have to put them together and it's just oh it's just so gorgeous like sacred amulets do you know what i mean and perception so so beautiful and with that kind of like uh on the almost opalescent effect i love this mercury with the caduceus love that so much Venus, beloved. There's also like, the, you can really sense the passion in here as well, you know? Like it's almost like engulfing, isn't it? Completely engulfing. But it's very loved. Mars, which is motion. Jupiter, abundance. So yeah, now we're in the planets now. And look, you I just noticed that. You see that? You've got Europa as a bottle of wine. That's so cute. I love that. <laughs> Europa is one of the moons. Love that. Saturn. Structure. With this amazing astrolabe. Uranus change with the platonic solids in the side and this lovely geometric kind of holographic vibe. Love that. Neptune, ice, like clarity, vision. And Pluto, rebirth. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful illustrations. And then we move into the asteroids. Chiron. Such gorgeous images. Ceres. Or Ceres, I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. Pallas Athena. Think. Yeah, I do get a sense of strategy with this card. Juno, so cute, beautiful little parrots, partnership. Love that. Investor, half, half, however you want to pronounce it. Home. And then we move into the nodes, the placements within the chart. So we've got the south node, which is the past. These images, right? They're just like so powerful. They just evoke so much. The north node. Future. The Ascendant, the Entrance, the Midheaven, dreams, aspirations, goals, the Pinnacle, where do you want to reach to? The Descendant, into the Self, the Unknown, the stuff you keep hidden away. The root, the M. coli. Love that.
And then we move on to the houses. So the first house being of arrival, got this gorgeous stag with the world. So beautiful. Then you have the second house, resources. Can you see how they're just like really beautiful prompts to help you just to trigger some, some images into your mind about what these aspects are, what do they mean, how do they, you know, you could do a reading and then it just comes up and, um, you know, that could prompt you to look into your astrological chart that would help you to maybe maybe combat some of the things that came up in the reading. It's just so, I'm really excited about using them. Communication. These beautiful swallows. And also the blue. Associated with the throat chakra, fourth house, home. Fifth house, passion. Sixth house, sustainability. And these are just like prompt words that prompt, you know, your imagination to move further. You could have different names for these houses. So it's not necessarily, you know, rigid to the, those definitions. Relationship and seventh house, your relationships, your partnerships. Eighth house. This is another reason why I got this deck because of this card. Just love it. Mystery. Scorpio. Ninth house exploration. Sagittarius. Tenth house authority. Capricorn. This would be purpose. By the way, all the houses refer to the star signs, so the first house would be Aries and so on. Eleventh house, community. Aquarius. Twelfth house, introspection. Pisces. It is introspection, but I think it's so much bigger than introspection. It's the unknown. It's the complete unknown. It's the mystery. Like it's more so than the eighth house. The eighth house is kind of is Scorpio, so it's the darker side. But whereas the twelfth house is, is like a real, like it's the real unknown. And then we move into the um, how the planets behave within the chart. So we have the conjunction, which is the alliance, perfectly married by the goose geese which i think is um it reminds me of the lovers in this in the uh wild unknown tarot trying sextile so the symbiosis and you hear you have this beautiful nature that's occurring it also shows you how it appears within the chart as well so the trines and then the sextile opposition i really like this as well um yeah this kind of clash love that square semi square and quincux so this kind of like you know kind of bash they don't know what they what's going on they just like you know they don't know it just like bashes together it's really interesting really interesting uh depiction transits The whole thing of how you fit within the universe. Oh, sorry, no, that's not actually, that's more the progressions. The transits are more to do with the self and the progressions are to do with uh, the big kind of sweeping changes, which is why we've got the mountains there and then here we have the self. So yeah, the climate, the astrological climate and the journey is the whole story. So yeah, those are those cards. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, and... I, f I find that they're going to be like a really useful tool in being able to um, to do some cool readings. Um, they shuffle really well. Um, the this, even though I'm not really keen on on the cardstock, um, they do shuffle well. 
Um, oh, what flew out there? So we have a retrograde and it came out like that. Also, they say that the um, that that you can read them upside down and they do have like um, definitions for the challenges. So it'd be really interesting to look them up and to, to be aware of those as well. And I think if you have like a good knowledge of the um, tarot, you're off to a good head start. Um, in respect to how you can use these cards but if you're going to move into astrology and um, these are going to be like a really good um, deck to work with but yeah they're a good starter deck I would say just to get acquainted so when I did the reading earlier I got um, 8th house and then I got Pallas Athena so yeah, interesting. And then I'll do another one. And then we got retrograde again in reverse. Okay, let's see what that says. So thinking, being really structured and strategic about what it is that you want to kind of like explore, because maybe there are some things that you want to explore that are not really the norm. Some people may not want to uh, talk about these things. It's very difficult to have a conversation uh, with someone about something that you might be that, that you know you need to have a conversation about it's something that you're thinking about that's what it's saying in relation to what I'm reading now um, and the re retrograde reversed I would say I did read that earlier and retrograde reverse which would be the challenge it's not a time tempting though it may be to reminisce, pick at old scars or revisit a painful situation from your past just because you want an emotional charge of anger or the excuse to wallow in memories of betrayals and regrets. You've been there, done that, got the t-shirt and don't do it again. <laughs> that is exactly how I would talk, my friends. So yeah. <laughs> so why pick at it? Let it heal. Let it heal. Um, what I get from this particular reading is some people are not ready to talk about the things that you want to talk about. They're just not ready. So yeah, very interesting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Thank you so much for um, bearing with me and bearing with the light. Um, as I said, this is a really lovely deck um, and it's just got so much beautiful imagery to work with. I think um, it's definitely worth getting if you want to um, go forward with um, astrological work. Um, it's a good, good, good initial deck to get used to it. And even if you don't know about ast astrology, I think it will be a really good opportunity for you to like, um, you know, work with the astrological symbols and get to know them anyway thank you so much for um, joining me today and for this unboxing and walkthrough and i look forward to using these in readings with you very soon lots of love and have a beautiful day bye